Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon, vote for the character you want to see next, and like and subscribe for cooler scarves next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Greninja, a sneaky frog from Pokemon who made the jump to Super Smash Bros. kind of by luck of the draw? They were technically added to the Smash roster before the Pokemon game they were in came out. Thankfully, an unexpected surprise working out in your favor is very in character for a ninja. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to do ninja stuff, big jumps, sneaky sneaks, and smoke bombs. Next, we need some high quality H2O to wage war with water. Wage war using water, we're not gonna fight the water. Finally, we'll get plenty of versatility, my opinion on, oh Jesus, get ready to cringe. Finally, we'll get plenty of versatility. My opinion on TN, I would say that I'm pro, pro TN, sorry. <laughs> Oh, why did I write that? Okay. <clears throat> for stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Wisdom will be number one. Greninja has slightly better special attack than regular attack, and Wisdom will give us some very special attacks. Dexterity next. I was lying, this is actually going to be higher than your Wisdom modifier after racial bonuses. Your Water Shuriken does use the physical attack stat. Constitution after that, you're kind of a squishy frog, but don't worry, we'll have plenty of low hit die for that. Follow that up with Strength. You're pretty good at climbing, though we won't actually need this to climb. Intelligence is a bit low, Pokemon are slightly smarter animals, except Alakazam who has a 2 billion IQ or something. It's a fake number on an already fake system, that's double fake. We'll dump Charisma though, communication is hard when you can only say your own name. By the way, as I say in all Pokemon videos, don't just say your own name, I didn't give you permission to do that. If you want to be a frog, good news, you can be one, in Dungeons and Dragons at least. Grung get plus two dexterity and plus one constitution. They're amphibious to breathe air or water. They get a climbing speed equal to your base speed of 25 feet. Don't worry, we'll push that up higher later. And they're immune to poison damage and the poisoned condition. Obviously you used a poison type move before this or a steel move actually, that's also immune to poison type. You've got poisonous skin to force a DC 12 constitution saving throw on creatures you touch or they're poisoned for a minute. Lick is a very early move, but it's an effective one. As a frog, you have a standing long jump of 25 feet and a vertical jump of 15 feet, which is more than a level 20 barbarian. Trust me, we're not going to 20 levels of barbarian. All of this seems pretty good, but they nerf it a bit, giving you a water dependency, forcing you to hang out in water for an hour per day. Spend some time in a hot tub with one of your bros. Just stay five feet apart because social distancing is still important. We're not out of this yet. Oh my God. For your background, urchins get sleight of hand and stealth proficiency, adding to your free perception proficiency from being a grung. Pokemon gotta keep their head on a swivel. People are always trying to catch them. We'll kick things off as a monk, letting you grab two skills from the monk list like acrobatics and athletics, but we're mostly here for martial arts. That'll let you make your unarmed attacks with your dexterity modifier. You also deal a d4 of damage with them, and you can make unarmed attacks as a bonus action after you make one with your action. Mix those sticky fingers into a sweet, sweet combo. For your shuriken, I'd call a dagger. A shuriken will add some water to it in a bit. Just know that it's a monk weapon, which means that the damage die will eventually not be terrible. You can't use martial arts while wearing armor, but you don't even have a real scarf. It's just your tongue. So go with unarmored defense, making your AC 10, plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier, helping you stay out of enemies' hands. You ever try to catch a frog? It ain't easy. Second level monks get key points they can use to do cool frog stuff like step of the wind to dash or disengage as a bonus action and it doubles your jump distance, setting your max jump distance to 50 feet horizontally or vertically up to 30 feet. You'll have to dash to get that much movement, but hey, it does work well with step of the wind because, you know, dashing. Patient defense lets you dodge as a bonus action. It's not quite the teleporting we'll get later, but it will help you avoid getting hit. Flurry of Blows lets you make two unarmed attacks instead of one with your bonus action for an even better combo game. You can also fix up your grung speed with unarmored movement, boosting your speed when you're not wearing armor. Eventually, you won't need to dash for a step of the wind jump. It's a very fun disengagement option to just pew right up. Third level monks get to deflect missiles, letting you reduce damage from ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier and monk level as a reaction, and even yeet it back with a key point if you drop it down to zero. Having a counter is always fun. There's no substitute for it. You also get to choose a monastic tradition, and if you want to be a rogue but you don't have room for rogue levels, go for Shadow Monk. 
That'll give you Shadow Arts, letting you cast one of four spells with two key points. Dark Vision gives a creature eight hours of Dark Vision to see in the dark, but not through the darkness created by the Darkness spell, another spell that you get, and makes a 15-foot radius sphere of darkness that not even Dark Vision can see through. You might not be able to see through it, but it's a decent smoke bomb. Pass Without Trace is also good for getting you out of places, giving you and your allies within 30 feet of you plus 10 bonus to their stealth checks, so even Chestnut could be stealthy. Not that anyone would have a Chestnut, Chestnut is the worst. We all agree on that, right? Finally, Silence stops all sound from getting out of a 20-foot radius, which should help you be stealthy, but also stop casters from using verbal components. Since you're good at fighting without spells, this is a great way to take out special attackers. Fourth level monks get an ability score improvement. Start off with dexterity. That's what we're going to be using more first. We'll get the wisdom stuff later. Pretty standard monk stuff. Wisdom is generally considered the secondary stat. You also get slow fall, letting you reduce fall damage by five times your monk level as a reaction, which can be useful when your jump distance could actually make your legs shatter on the way down. Fifth level monks get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action and up to four with a flurry of blows. You are the fastest starter in the Kalos region. Gotta apply that to your speed. Not really. Speed is kind of binary in Pokemon. You're either first or last. It's more like initiative, and then everyone's speed doesn't matter anymore. Anyway, your monk die also bumps up to a d6, so your shurikens and punches are better. You also get Stunning Strike, letting you force a constitution saving throw on a creature you hit with a melee weapon attack, stunning them for a round if they fail. It only takes one key point to make your enemy flinch. Waterfall can make your enemies flinch. But Waterfall is a physical move that uses water, so what the heck are we supposed to do? How about you hit the 6th level monk for key empowered strikes, making your unarmed attacks magical in terms of overcoming resistances. Ta-da! Now you're just wrapping all of your physical attacks in water. Shadow Monks also get Shadow Step, letting you teleport 60 feet as a bonus action between patches of dark or dim light, and you have advantage on your first weapon attack until the end of the turn. Imagine a frog teleports behind you and says, Greninja, which is Pokemon for nothing personnel, kid. Also, again, don't just repeat your own name. I did not say that you did that. I don't want anyone saying that YouTube man ruined their D&D game on Reddit because he told someone to make a character who only says their own name. I did not say to do that. Seventh level monks get evasion, letting you take half damage on failed deck saves and no damage from successful ones. Turns out fireballs will be not very effective on you. You also get Stillness of Mind, letting you remove an effect of Charming or Frightening as an action on your turn. Those could give you disadvantage on your attack rolls, and you didn't go to Frog Ninja School for that. Eighth level monks get another ability score improvement, letting us cap off our Dexterity modifier right before we jump over to focus on your Wisdom modifier. We'll do that by hopping over to Druid, giving you Druidic, a special language that only Druids can understand. Or Pokemon. Pokemon understand each other, people are just pretending. We're really here for spells and cantrips. Shape Water lets you move water in a 5-foot cube, change its color, or freeze it as long as there's nothing inside. It's just flavor stuff. If you want to use some ice moves, Frostbite forces a constitution saving throw on a creature, dealing 2d6 cold damage to those that fail, and giving them disadvantage on their next attack roll. But the first level spells are really not what we're here for. Actually, Absorb Elements will help you resist more types of attacks, giving you resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage as a reaction, then change your type to add a d6 of that damage to an attack next turn. It's a little more like Kecleon's color change than Protean, but D&D characters don't have types, so it's the best we can get. Snare creates a trap in a 5-foot radius. When a creature steps in it, they'll have to make a dexterity saving throw. Failing that, they're hoisted into the air, and they're prone for your trap door. They're also restrained there until they can make a dexterity saving throw with disadvantage to escape. But until then, they can't do anything, so it could be really fun. Jump triples your jump distance, or sex tuples it with Step of the Wind for 150 horizontal jump distance or 90 feet vertically. If you triple dash, the most you can move in one round is 120 feet, so that's actually your horizontal jump distance. Unless you use Long Strider, then you can get 10 feet more base movement speed, so a triple dash would give you 150 feet. You can go from standing still to somewhere 150 feet away with a jump in one turn. Hilarious. Second level druids can choose a circle, and the circle of the land gives you some extra spells based on the sub-circle you choose. There are circles within circles, sort of like a Pokeball design. We'll choose Coast Druid, even though we don't get the spells just yet. We'll talk about those, you know, later. Currently, you get a bonus cantrip. Guidance lets you add a D4 to an ability check, so it can make you feel like you have expertise. You also get Natural Recovery, letting you recover half your Druid level in spell slots per short rest, helping you get all your PP back, or some of your PP. I'm an adult, I can handle it, I don't have to make a joke about PP. You can also Wild Shape to turn into a real frog. You get to turn into a beast of challenge rating one fourth or lower, and you get the physical stats, but keep your soft stats. It's not something that's really important to land Druids, but it could be useful to give you some temporary HP. That isn't technically temporary HP, it can get healed with Cure Wounds, it's just HP that you have 
temporarily. Druid's a weird class. People say that Druid isn't that hard of a class, but what's the harder class? Artificer? Maybe? Warlock, I guess? Druids definitely top three. Third level Druids can learn second level spells. You get Misty Step and Mirror Image for free from the coast. Misty Step lets you teleport 30 feet as a bonus action, and it doesn't even have to be dark or dim. Mirror Image lets you use double team, making some illusory copies of yourself when someone tries to attack you. You get to roll a d20. If you have three duplicates, they hit a duplicate on a six or higher, eight or higher with two duplicates, and 11 or higher with one duplicate. It's technically banned and competitive, but I don't think you're playing D&D competitively. You can also grab Pass Without Trace, so you can cast it with spell slots instead of key points. Spike Growth lets you make a 20-foot radius circle of spikes, turning an area into difficult terrain and dealing 2d4 piercing damage to creatures for every 5 feet they move in that area. Unfortunately, you can't lay down three layers, but it's a nice way to encourage people to stay away from you, or to stop them from switching out. Fourth level druids get an ability score improvement or a feat. We'll grab the skill expert feat for plus one to your wisdom and extra skill like survival to track people down, and expertise in a skill like stealth to double your proficiency bonus with that skill. Pairing that with pass without trace effectively makes you invisible. Fifth level druids can learn third level spells like water walk, letting up to 10 creatures walk on liquids without falling in. Not just water, but quicksand, lava, anything that's somewhat runny. You get that spell for free from the coast druid. We don't need water breathing since you're already amphibious, but you get it, I guess. Tidal Wave is a spell that you'll have to take from your actual druid list. That lets you surf, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 30 foot long, 10 foot high, 10 foot wide area, dealing 4d8 bludgeoning damage to those that fail, and they're knocked prone if they fail. Half as much damage and no prone if they succeed. I like that surf creates a wave for you. It would be like if there was a move called Jog that built a sidewalk. Wall of Water creates a wall of water that's 30 feet long, 10 feet high, and 1 foot thick, or a ringed wall with a 20 foot diameter that's 20 feet high. That area is difficult terrain, and ranged attacks are made with disadvantage through the area, and you can freeze pieces of the wall with spells that deal cold damage. It's a lot of business, but if you get creative, it can be pretty fun. Six level land druids get land stride, letting you ignore non-magical difficult terrain, and you get advantage on saving throws against plants. Obviously, you use your protein to avoid being weak to grass move. Land stride isn't all that strong. Kind of weak. Seventh level druids can learn fourth level spells. Coast druids get freedom of movement for free, letting you ignore all difficult terrain. Nothing can slow you down, and you can slip out of shackles with five feet of movement for an hour, no concentration required. You also get control water for free, letting you control water in a 100 foot cube, flooding it, parting it, changing its slope, or making a whirlpool that sucks creatures in if they fail a strength check, dealing 2d8 bludgeoning damage to those that fail. You need a lot of water for that spell. No surprise, coast druid does better in the water. Eighth level druids get another ability score improvement, keep working that wisdom modifier up for better AC and better special attacks. We'll bounce back over to Monk now for something totally useless. Unarmored movement improvement lets you run up walls and over water while you're unarmored. You can already run up walls with your sticky fingers. You can already go over water with water walk. I guess this can help you save a spell slot for water walking. 10th level monks get another useless thing with purity of body, making you immune to poison and disease, which we already had from Grung, except for the disease part, I guess. Contagion is a nasty spell, but it's not super common. We really bounced back for the 11th level of monk, giving you Cloak of Shadows, letting you turn invisible with your action when you're in dim or dark light. You stay invisible until you make an attack or cast a spell. That's also actually not the thing I wanted. I wanted a D8 of damage for your monk die and more key points. That's the benefit of bouncing back to monk, and we don't really need any more druid spells. Our capstone is the 12th level of Monk for one last ability score improvement, letting us cap off our Wisdom modifier, which will let you set your AC to 20. That's pretty crazy. Frog. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're sneaky, with expertise in stealth and pass without trace to give you a plus 27 to your stealth checks. That's pretty wild, and you can even turn invisible before doing that. You're also incredibly mobile, with big movement speed, giant hops, and sticky hands to stick to walls. Finally, you're very hard to hit, with 20 base AC and patient defense to avoid enemy attacks. For weaknesses, there's a lot of overlap between Grung, Monk, and Druid that means you could've just grabbed something else. You're also not great at talking to people. Hopefully you've got a tiny little rat with you that everyone loves. Finally, water spells are mostly useful around water, so if you're in a desert, you might do a little bit worse. But the best thing about a monk is that they're always prepared, so you can at least punch things, hop around, stick to walls, and use all of the powers of Frog and Ninja to get the job done. Just watch out for the original mascot. It would be shocking if you lost to a first form Pokemon. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for Sweet Baby Ray Zal Ghoul, Tenzin from Legend of Korra, Martyr Ligarius from Bloodborne, or Tenya Ida from My Hero Academia. And sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.